Hello, welcome to a Creature Unreal 4 plugin tutorial. This tutorial is going to talk about the third party static library and how to compile it for the Creature plugin. All right, so let's before we begin, let's talk about why you need a static lib. Now, the way Unreal 4 works is that, or at least the way Creature works in Unreal 4, is that we notice we have let me pull out the Unreal 4 project. So we have a plugins folder, okay, and if you go into the plugins folder, you have a creature plugin which you can grab from GitHub. Now in this directory, you have a couple of folders, right? If you go into source, you're going to notice creature editor, those are the source files for the creature editor plugin, the things that define a UI. Creature plugin, which defines the core components, the stuff that renders and, and draws all the creature actors and creature mesh components on screen. And then there's this folder called third party. Now what is that? So third party actually is the core library that drives the entire creature system. Okay? So this is the library that's going to read in your JSON files and then actually compute or calculate the points and pose your character based on the bones. So this is the library that, that interfaces the JSON creature file with your Unreal layer. Okay? So this is basically the core posing engine of creature. All right. So if you go into creature lib, you're going to notice these files. And today we're going to talk about actually how to compile this static library for various platforms, because you, you're going to have to do this. Uh, the reason is because the provided libraries right now work for the Mac PC platforms and, and also HTML5. But if you want to compile your creature plugin for say the PS4, Xbox One, or iOS, you're going to have to learn how to compile this static library yourself in order to generate a static library that's compatible with your specific platform. Make sense? Okay. So I'm going to go through a simple walkthrough of how to build this static library in Visual Studio for the PC, but you should be able to adapt it easily to the platform of your choice. Okay, so before we start diving into Visual Studio, let me walk through the different folders or directories that this that the third party library consists of. Okay, so there's the includes folder. If you go in there, there's a ton of uh, include files that you're going to need to compile this library. Don't worry about that, we get to that. And then there's the source, that's the actual C files that constitute the third party library. All right, and then there's libraries, and this is the final output of where to place the static library. You notice there is a Mac version, a Win64 version, and a HTML5 version. Okay, So without further ado, let's get started and let's go into Visual Studio and we're going to make a new creature static library and build it. Okay, so now I'm in Visual Studio. The first thing I'm going to do is to make a new project, like in this window over here. Okay, and then I'm going to pick Win32 project, right? Because it says a project for creating a Win32 application, console application, DLL, or static library. That's what we want. And I'm going to call it something. So let's just call it, say, uh, test static lib, for example. Okay, and I'm going to say okay. And then it's going to go through a wizard. Let's go next. And now we're going to pick a static library. That's what we want, right? Let's uncheck pre-compiled header. Uh, you can ignore that one too. Okay, and click finish. Okay, so now the project's created. We actually have to put in the files for this plugin, right? So we're going to have to include the source files. So if I pull up the, from the GitHub uh, repository, if I pull up the source, let me just pull it up. Okay, so here's the GitHub repository. If I go to if I go to source, third party, creature lib, source, these are the files that have to be included in, in order to build the third party library. So I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to drag and drop them into source files. Okay, uh, we're not done yet <laughs> because as you can see right now, these source files won't build. The reason is because they haven't, see there's all these errors out here, right? Because they couldn't find the include headers. So we have to include, as I showed you just now, we have to allow Visual Studio to know about the includes folder, okay? Okay, so you notice there's some errors including the header files. In other words, our project has issues finding the header files. In order to fix that, we're just going to have to allow the project to find those header files. Okay, so the easy way to do that is to first find where the header files are. And if I go into the third party in creature lib, right, source, 
third party creature lib doesn't includes folder, double click on that and just click on any file, right click, click properties, okay? And you will see the location of this file. So let's copy that, all right? Go back into Visual Studio, under test static lib, right click, click properties, all right? And now under C++ and general, under the general section, there is a property called additional include directory. So click on that and paste your include includes folder there, okay? And make sure you pick the right platform. So I'm gonna build for x64, 64 bits and release, all right? So click okay, and the errors are gone, cool. Also, you notice I've picked release in x64. Make sure that that's building for the right platform you want to. Now, when I build it now, you're gonna encounter maybe another error depending on your compiler, okay? It's gonna complain, it's gonna say error mpy undeclared identifier. That's because one of the math uh, mpy constants isn't defined. We can easily fix this by copying this thing called use math defined. So copy that, okay? Now we have to tell the compiler, the preprocessor, to, to understand what the, the mpy, the constant is. So go back into your C++ uh, tab and then under preprocessor, okay? Uh, edit, edit this thing over here, preprocessor definitions. Let's paste underscore use underscore math defines. Okay, click OK and apply. All right, and now let's build it. And yay, there you go. So now the static lib actually has been compiled. That's pretty cool. Huh? Okay, so we have the static lib over here, right? So it's called test, test static lib dot lib. That's the one we built out in Visual Studio. If we go back into our creature plugin source third party creature lib folder, you're going to see a couple of folders. Again, you're going to see includes, libraries, and source. What we care about is the, the folder called libraries this time. So go into libraries, you're going to see a couple of files there already. This is exactly where you put your static lib. Okay, I've, I've test static lib here. And you notice I already have a couple of static libs compiled. I have an HTML, HTML5 version. I have a x64, 64 bit version for Windows. And I have a static lib for Mac. So what you want to do is to drag in your static lib, your new one, into this folder. Okay, that's what you do. That's the first step. All right. Once you once you're done with that, once you you know you've put that in, how do you actually build your Unreal 4 project to use that static lib? Well, the way you do it is you're gonna have to modify the C sharp C, C sharp uh, file of of Unreal 4. There is a build script that is in this folder in plugins creature plugin source creature plugin. There is a C, a C sharp script over here. Now, if we open up this file, let me just drag it in. Okay, I'll pull this up. This is the actual c -sharp script, the build script that's going to allow you to find and use your new static lib for your particular platform. Okay, makes sense? So, and it's, it's not, it, it seems a bit overwhelming, overwhelming, but it's really not. Now let me walk you through the code. So first of all, the function you really care about is this function, load creature lib. Okay, so this is the function that tells the build system which static lib to actually compile for your particular platform. So you notice already right now, it, there is a couple of if statements. It's, it's deciding between 64-bit and 32-bit version. I don't provide a 32-bit version yet, but as you can see, it's really easy to build one. But right now, um, it basically decides if it's Windows or Mac, right? If it's Windows, it's going to use the creature.lib with with a particular platform string. You can actually hard code this to make it find your, your actual static lib. Now, if it's a Mac platform, okay, it's gonna use this static lib. See how I hard coded that in? The Mac platform is over here. This is the Mac, uh, let me find it. This is the, the Mac static lib. So let's go back into, let me see source third parties lib libraries okay so the mac static lib is called lib creature ue4 core dot a right so when i'm on a mac okay i'm going to use this guy over here right and i'm on windows i'm going to use the creature dot lib whatever thing here which is this guy over here and if i'm building for the web if i'm on, on html5 i'm going to use creature html5 dot dot bc which is over here, okay? So you can add your own. You can add your own for Xbox One or PS4, or just, if you don't care about that, just get rid of all this stuff over here and just hard code your static lib 
just like how I'm doing for the Mac or HTML5 over here, right? And that's really all it is. Once you're done, once you're done with that, you can basically build your game for your particular console or iOS platform. And that sums up how to build and use a creature static lib for various platforms. Thanks for watching.